First of drop, we saw you kind of passing the ball with Lonnie doing some drills. Uh, once a point guard, always a point guard? Uh, you just love being in the gym, Evan. I think uh, you get a chance to, I don't know, uh, get on the floor and be with these guys. I, uh, I envy what they do for a living, for sure. I mean, you lived it too, so it's kind of fun <laughs> to enjoy, not live through them, but kind of get the juices flowing for you a little bit too? Yeah, it's just a, uh, it's just a great space to be in when you're in the gym, uh, in between games, get to be on the floor with guys, getting better, and uh, work on your craft. Uh, not, not a lot of things can replace that, man. <laughs> Well, we're going to come in and see you running. No, no, no. I'm smarter than that, though. Huh? I'm getting smarter as I get older. Huh? Uh, Dayron confirmed he's going to be back tomorrow. Yeah, what are your expectations for him? Yeah, we'll just see what his minutes look like. Uh, overall, he'll be on a minute restriction also with the rest of the guys. Uh, but it'll be good to have a, another big body available uh, to, to play tomorrow. What do you see, like, you know, obviously he's going to be on a minute restriction tomorrow, but as we move forward, how do you see the chemistry between, like, him and Schroeder and that second unit? Yeah, it's interesting just because you saw uh, what Dennis can do from the point guard position, whether he was the connection he had with Nick, which we'll need to grow that also. Um, but, um, you know, Dayron gives us the ability to be in different coverages as well. Uh, so we'll see how that fits. Uh, so we got a little bit of uh, makeup ground uh, as far as figuring out both on both ends of the floor. Any updates on uh, Cam Johnson? Uh, Cam Johnson, uh, not available tomorrow. He's doing stay ready today. Uh, we'll see with that, how he comes out of that tomorrow and um, just move on from there. But positive steps that uh, he is doing stay ready today. Right now, you guys just have him doing just some light, some light five on five stuff. Yeah, so which is good. Just uh, get a chance to be around other bodies and then see how his body responds tomorrow. Is that a good sign for the break that as, as it approaches up, you know, Dayron's healthy, Cam is getting back. Is that a good sign that you guys are starting to get a little closer to the hole? Yeah, it's smart. See, that's a, that's a talking about player thing. That's a player thing. You know, all the players get healthy right before All Star break. Uh huh. Give me things so they can have their All Star break. No, but uh, uh, for us to get healthy. Uh, is, is the most vital thing for us going forward. And uh, it gives us a chance to figure out our combinations, who's going to play rotations, uh, to use our depth, and uh, to figure out on both ends of the floor what's beneficial. And so it, it is a good sign, Evan, uh, that we're getting healthy going into the break. And then with like 30, I believe 30 games left now, I think in the season, you guys have that urgency. Cam Thomas has talked about like, you know, guys can't mess around now. Do you sense the guys are even more locked in knowing that the break is coming in? Time is getting short. Yeah, I hope so. You know, just historically, games uh, pre and post break, uh, you've been able to make up some ground, whether a team is not focused, not ready to play, uh, thinking about the break too early, or still in the break after you're done with the break. So you see that on both sides. So uh, it's definitely something I've stressed to the group, uh, how we're going to approach these 30 games and uh, with a relentless effort and ability to focus. Against San Antonio, how quickly were you to adjust from player combinations that you wanted to see going into the game versus sticking with what was working? Uh, I'm a pretty uh, adjustable guy, Lucas. I think uh, going into the game, we definitely uh, have scripted uh, one of the best combos out there. Uh, but I think it's always vital to uh, feel the pulse of the game, whether there was a stretch. I think I ran Cam Thomas in the third for like uh, 11 minutes, uh, whether it, it was a early sub with uh, Jay Will, sensing that Nick had two fouls and I was going to have to bring him back with those positions. So those things happen in the course of the game that you got to adjust to. And how much was the Dennis, Dennis backcourt a part of that going in and how much of it was you just realizing that they were really having a positive impact? Uh, that was me wanting to see that. So I subbed those two at the same time to, to come into the game to get a, a sense of can they in fact, play both together. Uh, what the rhythm felt like, who was going to bring it up. Can they both uh, defend bigger than their positions? And so all those things uh, I did want to see. How do you think having similar-ish guys, or similar -ish skills at least, interior passing, paint pressure, ball pressure, how do you think those not just coexist, but can they like compound and produce like some greater than the whole? You hope so. Uh, and that is where we're hoping to make some money. Uh, it's interesting, you know, as we get whole, you know, it was 240 minutes in that game that you got to divvy up between guys. And uh, maximizing that is going to be the, the test for this group. Um, if some nights you might play 12 minutes, some nights you could play 22 minutes. Uh, the different combination and the, 
realization we got to win every single game. That'll be the, the, the mindset going into that game. That starts with the Celtics. How, how much of a challenge is you know closing out the first half against a team like that with back-to-back -back games? Yeah, it's interesting. Just uh, uh, having a you know same team that you're going to play twice. I think overall it's just a heck of a challenge for us. Uh, they'll make you focus or you'll pay for it on both ends of the floor. Uh, they're just so good at manipulating matchups and using their, their skill set to, to get shots that they want. And then they figured out how to cover for each other uh, on the defensive end of the floor. Uh, guards that are big and strong and use that ability to uh, get you where they want to. So this is a, this is a game of want and, uh, and purpose for sure. Given how well Dennis looked, barely getting time to see anybody on his first game. How much was it to see him in practice kind of get building that chemistry today a little bit more? Yeah, that's that's the goal. These guys got to feel and sense, uh, you know, because he, he just has different movements than um, uh, a previous pick and roll could look different than a week ago than it does with Dennis. And uh, getting our bigs to, to feel that, you got to go through practice with that a little bit. Uh, you, know, you just take the two passes. He threw a bounce pass to, to Nick that Nick has to be ready for and have vision with that to catch it. And then the pocket pass he threw to, to Dorian also, the ability to uh, read that, sense what the weak side looks like. Like, you got to practice and, and have some days together to get that real feel. And when's the last time you had a point guard that wears a beanie throughout practice? You know what, man? Like, it's crazy. I, I, I love it. Like, it's amazing how... <clears throat> I tell people, when I came into the league, Coach Sloan, you couldn't enter over there from the locker room if your shirt tail wasn't tucked in, if your shoes wasn't tied. Like, don't even come on the court. And now, you know, you can have your jewelry on, you can have your do-rag on, you can have your beanie on. Just come hoop, CJ. That's it. Uh, that's where we come from, man. It's amazing. Coach Sloan would have kicked me out. <laughs> I was going to ask you about that one trending sequence where he had a rotation at the rim yeah. and he ran the floor and dished it off to Ben who got fouled. Is that the type of stuff he needs to do more, coexist with other ball handlers to be in the rotation? Yeah, it's interesting. You know, his just becomes, again, it's a matter of minutes and right. then the combinations that you can have out there on the floor for him. So you see that he's probably most effective when he has the basketball in his hand. So he can play DHO, he can run keeps. We ran uh, away for him, which he kept and turned and, and, and turned the corner. So the combinations around him have to be like on point for him to be maximized. And, uh, and that's always gonna be the challenge. Uh, high IQ guy, uh, but again, the, the shooting combinations and the other guys around him becomes essential. And then just we asked Nick after the game about pick and roll kind of synergy with Schroeder and how good it looked. Do you think that just having two guys that know how to play that can be a little overstated, or do that does that really need time guarding a big? No, I think uh, he'll get a good hold of it, playing with Dennis Moore and uh, understanding that there's some things that he probably didn't get in the past, like that pocket pass, right. he wouldn't have got that. It wouldn't have been on time, on target, at his hip, ready for him to finish. So he'll be looking for that now, and then we'll do some breakdowns like we did today with those two and try to force that synergy uh, uh, quicker than, than later. Um, but when bigs know they're going to get the basketball, they'll roll. They'll be ready to catch it. All right, guys. Thanks, JV. All right, guys. Thank you. Good.